Hello everyone, I'm Jim. I own a small vintage tube store called Valves and More and I've noticed that there's not a lot out there in YouTube land for beginners. So let's start at the beginning. Here's a 12AX7. It's probably the most common small signal tube made today. It's a relatively new tube in the history of vacuum tubes. So, what have we got? We've got glass envelope. We've got nine pins on the bottom. Inside the glass envelope we have the vacuum. So there's no oxygen inside. There may, depending on the tube, there may be a type of gas inside. But basically we have a vacuum. And if we didn't have a vacuum, you would know right away because the tube would start to go white and the heaters that are inside here, the filaments that warm the tube up, that make them hot, that make the circuit work, they would burn up just like a light bulb would burn up. So you would think that this small little tube would be one circuit but in fact it's actually a dual tube. There's two tubes inside of here. Is that common? Yes, but back in the day, early days of radio, there was no such thing as that. There was one circuit inside of one tube. So here's an earlier common small signal tube. This is a 6SN7. S says Admiral on it. Admiral was just a reseller. This was probably made by Marconi in Montreal, Canada. And here you can clearly see the two plates, so there's two sections. So there's two tubes, two circuits inside of here. The, most of these will actually share a common heater, but we're not going to go into a lot of details. We want to run through a whole bunch of information. So what, is, what does this thing do, the 12AX7? Almost all vacuum tubes basically are amplification devices. And before solid state, before transistors came along, if you wanted to do something, amplify something, or do virtually anything electrically, you had to have a vacuum tube. So how do you know what a tube does? I think I've already said that this is an amplification device. I know that it has a nominal amplification of 100. So you put a signal in of, let's say, 1 volt, you should get 100 out. Now in reality, you might only get 70, 70 to 1. How do I know that? Every tube has a published spec sheet. This is an Electroharmonix. Electroharmonix will make a spec sheet for the 12AX7. And way down here, to show you where all the pins go, I'll show you all the electrical maximums and minimums of the tube, but here it says amplification factor nominal 92. There you go. And it says amplification factor not less than 78. Here's a fun spec sheet. This is a Russian version of the 12AX7. It's a slightly different tube, but down here you'll see amplification factor of each triode, so each section of the tube, is 100. So in fact, if you use both sections, you could get 100 and 100. So you could have an amplification factor of a nominal 200 to 1. So the 12AX7 is part of a large series of tubes that are modern small signal tubes. And the 12AU7 is another very common tube. It has a much lower amplification factor. We normally would say nominally a 20 to 1, and here the spec sheet says 17. So what does a 12AU7 look like? Well, it looks exactly like a 12AX7. The pins all go to the same connections electrically. The glass envelope is the same, but when you get to know more about tubes, you can see there's two plates inside, so two circuits, two tubes, a dual triode. But when you get to know tubes, you'll realize when you look at it, maybe you can see it here, 
This is a big flat plate, and this is more of a bumped rib plate. You'll be able to recognize, oh, that looks a lot like a 12AX7, and oh, that looks a lot like a 12AU7. What have we got here? Oh, here's a vintage tube. If you're watching this, that might be really what you want to see. This is an Amperex Bugle Boy 12AX7, made in Holland. You can see the print is almost gone, so how the heck would I know that that, in fact, is an Amperex Bugle Boy, which is worth a small fortune, if all that print was rubbed off, and many of them have lost their print. They're now, this tube might be 60 years old. So, on an Amperex tube, You can see, perhaps, there's a an acid etch number code on the shoulder of the tube. And if you go online, you can find a little data sheet that will tell you how to read that code. And you'll know which plant the tube was made in. you know at least what month, but in many cases, codes on tubes will get you down to the week, normally. And if it's a variant on the tube, it might even be in the code. So those are small signal tubes. These are preamplifier tubes. They're not power amplifier tubes. This looks like a tall small signal tube, doesn't it? It has the same 9-pin arrangement as these guys. But in fact, this is a small power tube, an EL84, a Valvo, a very nice tube, worth some serious money, um, very collectible. Here's a very common power tube, an EL34. This is also an electroharmonix. And if you're really paying attention, in fact, actually, if you pay attention right to the end, I'll give you some discount codes. How about that? But if you're looking at this, you might say, heck. Those plates look very similar, and I only see one big boxy plate. Well, there's only one tube inside of this tube, one circuit. That's all. It, and most power tubes are built that way. Not all, but most of them. Okay, what else can we show you? How about something really fun? Take a look at that. Here's your standard small 9-pin signal tube. And here is a big monster. This is a high-speed switch for radar. I haven't looked it up, so I have no idea if it's worth any money. Came in with a big batch of tubes a long time ago. And you can see here, it's got four pins. So, we should talk about that quickly. So this is called a nine-pin miniature. Nine-pin miniature, and the base arrangement, where the pins go, you can see it here in the spec sheet, this is called a 9A arrangement. There's a 9B. I, I don't have them all off the top of my head. But those 9A is the most common. All these tubes here use the 9A. The 6SN7, which is, believe it or not, has amplification of only about 20. And has, is it also a dual tube. It has two sections. You can see the two plates. This is an octal tube. It's got eight pins, and this is very, very common, this pin arrangement for a larger tube, a larger audio tube. The, all we're talking about is audio tubes. If you look at the EL34, it's also an octal, and it's got the same arrangement, but you'll notice there's a pin missing. Sometimes manufacturers will put all the pins in, even if you don't need them. And sometimes they'll let, leave the pin out because to make the circuit work, you don't need all eight pins for this type of power tube. Some tubes will need them all and some, some won't. So I think that's enough for the first episode. And the next episode we'll talk about power tubes. Oh, and here's a discount code for everybody. Feel free to use it as often as you like. And that's it. That's Jim from Valves and More signing off.